Hello, welcome to the Darren Connell podcast show. My name is Darren Connell and this is my podcast. And for the very first coming to help us, mate. No bother. I actually had Grado in as my first guest, but he's exhausted. Well, he's just finished Panto, is he not? He's finished Panto. And he's Panto's lost hell. His, he's lost his voice. Well, Panto's hell. He'll <laughs> Panto's have lost hell. his mind as well if it's anything <laughs> like the Panto's I did. Aye, he was sounding pretty rough on the phone. So thanks a lot for being on the You've actually done a podcast with me before, haven't you? I have, in a mobility garage or something. Yep. What was what was that? I can't really remember. What what was the story behind that? I did a podcast a couple of years ago, but it was in my my mate's mum's mobility shop, and I asked <laughs> Tom to come and be a guest on it. He had to use a wheelchair as a seat. That's right. There was no heating. Hey, fucking move. I know. Look at you. Can I swear? Aye. Right. Swear away, mate. Okay. Uh, I no, I've been. I have lost some weight, lost some timber, shifted some weight. Aye. Twelve stone, twelve stone, four pounds so far. Still got a while to go, but see, I can't believe. And it's now. It, it kind of took a wee while after that, but it's now coming off at a stone every three weeks. That's unbelievable. I know. That's like it? rapid. I know. It's but I thought that poss can he possibly be good for you? But no, apparently it's fine. But it'll slow down, apparently. It'll slow down quite soon. Now, can we talk about this? Right, okay. Because you like talk saying, about me. asking a woman her age. Yeah, stone now. No, I'll tell you in a year's time, Dan. <laughs> well, you look amazing, mate. Thanks, pal. And That's you've so uh, gone by the online kind of response, and from your friends like me, you've inspired Aye. a lot of people, mate. Well, see, I, I, well, it all kicked off this weekend because folk thought I was kidding on. Did you see that? People I, people were saying he's faking it. Nah. Listen, he was fatter than he's ever been. I, and what, try to think, when was I doing an Asda before Christmas? I, I had on two Christmas jumpers and a big... 9% of the people were going, good on you, big man. 1% were going, you're shite. Grief on Twitter, actually. She was saying she, fa- she fancied you. She was, like, genuinely gutted that you've... Genuinely gutted. You've lost weight and you've done well. I tried to argue with her, but I ended up just blocking her because yeah. I was getting too annoyed. Ah, fair enough. <laughs> but then, see, when you were pretty big as well, i seen some of the comments you used to get for... I always remember there was this guy, and he was, like, fat, bald, uh-huh. missing teeth. Right. And he's like, ah, God's sake, Tom, you need to get a grip of yourself. And it's you're never... Like, you it's look, you're like it's you're never Brad shape. Pitt that's giving you a hard time, is it? It's never an oil, <laughs> an oil painting that's giving you a hard time. It's always somebody that looks... As Janie Godley said, it looks like somebody that swam for Chernobyl. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, no, it's always... The people that the people that seem to have a, a bit of a problem with it are always people that have got the same problem I've had, you know? And yeah. they're just like, how dare you get all right? How dare you start getting better? And, yeah. Um, it's just funny, folk are weird. So can I ask you how, what made you think, right, I need to, I need to get this done or oh, do something well, I mean, else? I've been thinking, Dan, I've been thinking about it for years, man, you know, because uh, um, I tried everything, tried everything, you know, tried all the diet clubs, tried support groups, all that kind of stuff. And, it, you know, I've met... Just plus and all that. Just plus, you know, and, and nothing was... Because I'm addicted to food. I'm addicted to, you know, I I want Domino's, but I don't just want a pizza. I want all the shit that comes with it and two bottles of juice. Wasn't in my DNA and wasn't... I just wasn't able to do it. And I also suffer from depression and anxiety really yeah. badly. And so I didn't even want to get myself better. A pal of mine, Mae Miller, who's a, a singer uh, in Glasgow... And she had it with me, so I got involved that way and went along and, and ended up... It took about it took about a year to be able to get it done because I had to lose weight in order to go under an anaesthetic because it's not a gastric band, it's a gastric bypass. So that is a, a five-hour operation. It can be up wow. to a five-hour operation. And it's what they do is they seal off 95% of your stomach and leave you with a 5% pouch. And then they cut your intestines away from the other stomach and rewire it up to the bottom of the new stomach. And there you are, that's your new plumbing and that's you for wow. life, that's you stuck. There's no going back. That's crazy. So uh, has your diet changed? Aye, oh God, it has to. I, you can't, after, see the thing is, I thought, well, it'll just be like, you know, 
tisk tisk naughty boy after a couple of bites, but it's not. It changes your whole hormonal makeup and your whole the whole way your brain processes what eating is and what food is. Yeah. So after uh, a few bites of something and um, it's full, then I'm I'm okay, and you don't really feel full and you don't really feel hungry ever. You just kind of have to judge it. But if you eat too much, it gets stuck and you can come back up. Wow. But you get better at knowing when you're going to, you or what you know. It. So you don't put any more in your plate than you know you're going to manage. <clears throat> so has that been a shock to your system then? Aye, aye, aye. I'm freaking out. That's as you can see. Though. Was it sore? No. Like recovering? Well, do you know what the worst bit about it was? When I came out the anaesthetic, they told me June Milder had died. Oh. And he died while I was getting my operation. So I, I felt, and I was so spaced out on whatever they'd given me that I thought I'd killed them. <laughs> so I thought, I can't get any more operations. Somebody like a really right. dark chocolate factory. Aye, it was. It was like the, I know I had the, the the king of chocolate died when I was getting my surgery. That's a sign. That's never occurred to me, Dan. That's a sign, mate. That's a sign. So, Cho- chocolate died. <laughs> the, day when my, chocolate when, died. the day that chocolate died. So did you have any chocolate at Christmas? No. Honestly. No. No anything. And they've told me. I mean, they said to me, well. You know, you can handle if if you want to have a what's the singular of roses? You yeah. know, if you want to have a, a rose or a rosy God. that wouldn't kill you. And I thought I could I don't even want to risk it because I was of the 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 makeup that you couldn't just have one, sweetie. You know, that uh, I would have done in the tin. Yeah. That was my first Toblerone free Christmas. That's and also actually wait a minute, yeah. As soon as I get the surgery they fucked up the Toblerones. They did. They spaced the Alps out. You see that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Don't see think Toblerones. So. Right. You know how there's like, a wee triangle, and then there's a space, and then there's another wee triangle, and there's another space. Aye. They made the spaces bigger, so that they have to use less chocolate. So, That's, if yeah. I had still been into the Toblerones, I would have been really furious about that. Devastated. 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 So uh, you don't drink, no. You don't smoke, no. And now you can't eat hey. pizzas. No. So what's your vice? Coffee. Coffee. Aye. Still into the coffee. Mad junkie, but I've got I've got two coffee machines. I've got one of the bean to cup things, and I've got one of the filter things for when I really need it extra strong. <laughs> so I'm um, kind of you offered me a coffee when I came in tonight. I've just I, I really can't. Aye, because I've got like speed. I, I don't know, I don't want you thinking that I'm a bullshitter, but I remember, see, when you came to do the podcast the first time, mm-hmm. and I was sitting and I was talking to you, and you were telling us that you don't drink, mm-hmm. and I think he says you've not had a drink in like 10 years. 15 or years. 15 aye. years. Aye. And I was just like, ah, how can you go so long with it? And I think I had a hangover <laughs> as well. But I was like always w- one of those people that I would go 12 weeks without a drink Aye. and then I would go wild and Aye. binge uh-huh. and then detox. Uh-huh. And it's always been in my heat to stop drinking and then see since that day when you told us about it that you definitely planted a seed. Like I walked away from that uh, podcast thinking I'm going to probably chuck booze. Aye. I mean, I did eventually and Aye. I'd say it started that combo because I've never spoke to anybody about it before I've just hang about with mad comedians and get steaming and have a laugh <laughs> and then when I've got a hangover I just lie in the bed aye uh, for 25 years well see the thing is if you've stopped drinking now Dan what age are you? 29 ah, you're, you're smashing see if you if the older you get the longer the hangovers last so the hangovers were starting to get to 4 and 5 days for me and I couldn't work, I couldn't get out, I couldn't do anything. So, I mean, I'm, I'm an alcoholic, so I've, uh, that that was my route. I kind of realised that and I had to get help that way. Yeah. It wasn't just a case of stopping, I've decided to stop drinking. I actually had to hit rock bottom. Yeah. And a lot of people can manage to stop drinking before they get to that stage, you know. So I was at the stage where genuinely I never saw daylight. I was just out every night and I was a maniac. Gigging, it, gigging and drinking at night. Gigging and drinking and DJing. And, and when I was DJing, you never paid for drink. It just got lined up in front of you. So I just used to have a big line of pints and I just used to work my way through them and then go home via the Oswald Street kebab shop for a Sardbenny. And uh, you ever had a Sardbenny out of there? No food there. I've had it for Best Kebab. But I think that's like right. 
Well, this was the first place like to do it. Pigeon meat. <laughs> <laughs> Not a pigeon kebab. But when you've got 10 pence in you, a date a brick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... Aye, it was just mental. And I used to smoke 80 fags a day as well. 80? Aye, aye. Tom, that is... I know. That's crazy, mate. I know, I can't believe how, it. How long did you smoke for? I smoked... Well, do you know... Well, my first... This is terrible. My first cigarette was in the queue for Greece the day it opened. So that was 1978, when I was nine. <sighs> Wow. But I didn't properly start smoking. I know, God. I didn't properly start smoking until I was about 15. And then I stopped when I was 29, your age. Good. When I went to see Titanic. <laughs> and I couldn't smoke in the cinema. And I'd bought one of these plastic inhalators that you put the thing in. Aye. And you're meant to, you were meant to change the thing once a day. It was before electric cigarettes. And I went through about five of these things, sitting watching Titanic, and then of course at the end I was howling because it was Titanic, <laughs> and she'd thrown that big diamond into the sea, and it was at the Odeon at Springfield, and I came out of the cinema, and I walked over to the, the Clyde, and I took my fags out, and I lit one, and it was minging, and I felt sick, and I just chucked my cigarettes into the Clyde, and I still had Celine Dion in my head singing, <laughs> and I watched the cigarettes <laughs> float away down the, the river, and I've no touched one since. It's like a Glaswegian Titanic. A Glaswegian Titanic, the Waverley. Aye, 20 camel. The Renfrew camel Ferry. Are called. Aye. <laughs> I, I've never, I used to always be uh, anti-smoking, like my family smoke, mm -hmm. and it just totally disgusted me, but see when I chucked drink, and then I had the fringe coming up, I go up, go up at the fringe and everybody's wasted, and I'm just there with pints of soda water, and I'm like, I've got nothing in my hands. What am I going to do? Aye. So I was like... You know what? I'm going to try smoking and right. see the first day of the fringe. Mm -hmm. I had one cigarette and I was like, <laughs> and I was going green. I felt <laughs> sick. I was sweating. Mm -hmm. And then see by the end of the fringe, mm -hmm. I was smoking about 25 fags a day. So it went, it just went like that. And it, the last day I had four cigarettes, like four fags in a row. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, I can't do this. So did you I, stop again? I just stopped like that. Maybe you're I, just a fringe smoker. Maybe you only smoke in Edinburgh. I think it helped. It did help me get through it. Right. But I was like... See, when you smoke, it. you're part of the gang. You yeah. can go outside with the gang. You know, I've I've done jobs where you find out more about it. It's like there's a Friends episode about it as well. You'll find out what's going on if you're out having a cigarette with the yeah. bosses. Um, but I, it's the best the best thing I ever did was stopping smoking because it's just the the effects on your health are absolutely brutal. Ah, it's stinking isn't it. Aye. Uh, what about a cigar? No, I, I see. I'd be fear. I'd end up wanting a cigarette if I had a cigar. You'd smoke you know. them like cigarettes. I would smoke them like cigarettes because I used to be a really aggressive smoker. I used to go. Oh, you know, right. and it would be like half the fag would be gone in one puff. <laughs> I was such a nervous wreck. But, uh, no, I'm, these days I'm more into the, you know, I'm into the meditation and the incense and the candles and the baths and Good. all that stuff. And the green tea and, and all that? No, coffee. 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 No, I'm, just, I'm not going to give that up. I've got to have something. Ah, you need some vice. Um, remember that time we, I was driving with Tom once as well, and I always knew you were classically trained. Uh, classically trained well, at what? Like instruments, like you could... All right. Uh, what's the word? Like you're professional. Right. Like uh, playing piano and stuff. But the first time I heard you sing, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, it was when totally... did you hear me sing? Do you remember we went for a drive that day? Uh, we went to... Uh, what's that cafe in the West End? Cafe. That took, they took an hour and a half to bring the sausages out. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's really trendy. They, they, they Tri give me Tribeca? Looks. Aye, uh -huh. Aye. Aye, I didn't really fit in in there. Sorry, Tribeca, <laughs> if you're watching. We um, got a plate of sausages when we went for a drive. We went for a drive. With the windies down and you were blasting the music. Was I? Aye. Right, okay. I was totally shocked that you had such a angelic voice. <laughs> <laughs> Almost angelic. I no, I was no, I was a singer. God, I was a singer for years before I ever did any acting. I was a session singer. Because you backing vocals for everybody. You stuff. went to musical. Uh, I went to rock music college. It was one of the first ones that that was in Britain. One of the first actual kind of modern music courses in Britain. I went there in the late eighties, eighty eight. I went. What age were you? Nineteen. Brilliant. Oh, it was mental. It was like going away from home and going to Perth, which was this wee town with loads of pubs. Yeah. 
It was just two years, and the, and the exams for the for the the course were in the pub because it was a gig. You did you know, a band, had a band called the Squirrel Mafia. The Squirrel, the Squirrel Mafia. Mafia. That's uh, a belter. And I used to wear, God, it was when bros were out, so I had a bros shirt which was a white shirt with red stars all over it, uh-huh. and combats and combat makeup and a skinhead. I always remember, see, years ago, I seen you in, see, when you were in Karen Dunbar show, mm-hmm. I seen you in HMV, and that, that's before I did comedy, but I was obsessed with Scottish comedy, uh-huh. so I clocked you in uh-huh. HMV, and I was like, no way, there's that guy for the Karen Dunbar show, <laughs> and I went up to talk to you, but you uh-huh. looked at me, and I just froze, so I was like coding a bunch of DVDs, and I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you just came to done that. Right, and I was like, all right. Oh man. I did now I walked away, it was you know like who the fuck's that yeah? <laughs> but I that was good. Um what was I gonna say there? And then uh you when are you are you going back in River City? I don't know. You don't know? Don't know. Cause you returned there for a while. I went back the see the thing is they wrote they wrote Big Bob out to go to Fat Farm. Yeah. Right. I was... need to say this, by the way, see that your last episode. Mm-hmm. No, I'll admit it, I was now, never really ever watched River City, but I thought I'd watch your last episode because you're my pal. And mm-hmm. I was like, fuck it. You're my pal, I need to watch it. <laughs> and honestly, <laughs> I was just watching it and I was like, see, fucking 10 minutes in, I was like crying with tears. Well, see, the thing about it was they had they had asked, they, they, they'd kind of asked me about it first and went, are you happy doing this? And I... At the time, I was at my heaviest, and I was at my kind of illest as well, depression-wise. So I just kind of went, I, you know, and they were great about it because the writer was in touch with me, and the producers was phoning me, and they were saying, anything you're uncomfortable with, we're fine. Uh, anytime you want to stop, just stop, we'll change things, whatever. But I, I read the script, the script was brilliant, you know, it, was, it, was, it wasn't laughing at fat people, it was, it was really sympathetic. And uh, the uh, you know McLean that plays my mother in it was on the phone to me as well, and we ended up both of us howling a lot of that, that couple of weeks. We were both greeting quite a lot because yeah. I was going to miss her because I was going out of the show. She was going to miss me because we'd become really kind of mother son. Um, but also, it was my worst nightmare. My worst nightmare was having a heart attack in the house, and I live up to floors in a Glasgow tenement. My worst nightmare was having a heart attack and them not being able to get me out of the house. Yeah. And this is what they did in this episode. They had to put me in this sling shoot thing and drag it down the stairs. And, and I actually had to get in it and these extras pulling me down. So I was lying in it going, this is hell. This is the worst. This is my worst nightmare. Yeah. But at the same time, part of me was going, thank God it's not happening to me. And thank God it's... And almost... That was almost done. That was almost the point where I went, do you know, uh, this is the last time I'm going to worry about this. I'm going to actually do something about it. Yeah. And I knew I couldn't do the normal stuff about it. I know I, I knew I couldn't go to Weight Watchers or Slimming World. I knew I couldn't do one of these sachet diets or any of that kind of stuff because I tried and I really had tried all these years to do all that, going to the gym. Yeah, and you get you know it just you know what it's like. You, you do get, well when you do you, well, and then you you, you you can't cope with. Um, I saw that last episode was probably the thing that made my brain change gear a wee bit and me me go, if I don't sort this out, this is going to happen. You yeah. know, this is going to happen to me. And uh, I popped back for one episode, which we filmed about a year ago, nearly a year ago, and it wasn't on for six months, so. I had already started uh, a lot of the weight loss by the time it was broadcast. Yeah. So he had went back and he looked still quite big and people were going, don't hear it going, if that fan's still dead fat, nip, 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 nip. <laughs> and I can't ignore it. I end up fighting with folk online. You know, I can't leave it. So, uh, I mean, that happened again this weekend when I posted it. Normally I post up photographs on Facebook because in Facebook you know who's looking at it. Yeah. And I had done a kind of before-after photo because uh, I found this this River City publicity photo when I was at my heaviest and I put one just now and put it up. But I put it on Twitter this time, no thinking that Twitter's mental. Yeah. And Twitter went mental with it and the papers all printed it and it became a thing and then people started going, it hasn't lost weight, it's a hoax. Yeah. 
I saw him and he's still fatter than ever. And, and, I, and of course, I was, I was doing a gig on Saturday and it kept coming up on my iPad and I was going, how do you pretend you've lost 12 stone? How can you, how can you do that? It's a hoax. I know. You know, you wouldn't be able to leave the house or get an invisibility cloak or do something. But I think it's probably because, you know, people have seen that story or they've seen the photographs and they've thought, oh, well, that's him thin now. Yeah. What they don't realise is that I'm still on the journey and I've still got weight to lose. So they're going, well, I saw him and he's still overweight. I'm well, never going to be thin. I'm not a thin guy. And then they've just dismissed the fact that you've lost 12 stone because that's unbelievable. If you stopped right now, that alone is fantastic. It's Well, the, the benefits it's had in my health have been phenomenal so far. Yeah. Um, it's just weird. I've, I'm kind of having, I'm having a thing that pregnant women have, right? <laughs> it's not a minging thing, don't worry. I'm losing my balance, right? And my sister was saying, well, after she had her kid, you know, if she, if she, once she gave birth, she was losing her balance. So I'm standing up, and my mind is still waiting on this extra 12 stone to stand up with me, but it's yeah. not there, so I go, whoa, and fall forward a wee no bit. Because it's fallen off so fast, because it's fallen off a stone every three weeks. So I'm, it's almost like, a re-entry it's almost yeah. like an astronaut you know it's just a weird 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 thing but the good thing is loads of people that I know that I've had it before are, are in contact with me and uh, and they're telling me aye that I no don't worry you've not got a brain aneurysm you're fine you're, you're <laughs> just you're, you're just losing weight I remember because uh, that's probably why I loved your episode so much because I could relate to that see like your mum trying to give you food when you were sad Aye. like my gran was like that and stuff right, so that's probably why i loved the episode so much Aye. but i remember when i was younger i mean i've always you could see me once and i'll be 12 stone and then next week i'll be fucking 18 stone or something do you know what i mean and then i'm right. back down to 12 stone Aye. i remember when i was 15 i think i phoned nhs 24 mm -hmm. and that's the first time I ever lost weight. I went from 18 stone to 15 stone, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be 14 stone, and I couldn't lose that stone. Mm -hmm. So I phoned NHS 24, greeting down the phone. I need I need a gastric band operation. <laughs> Please, gonna help me. I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Oh, Darren, don't worry about it. Um, you know, you're all right. How much do you weigh? And I was like, 15 stone. And she's like, Ah, you fucking serious? <laughs> like, <on the> phone. <laughs> She, I think she was, she's like, ah, you need to be over 27 stone or something. Ah, you need to have like, like over, because I had gone uh, to try and get it in the NHS. I didn't get it in the NHS, I went private. Yeah. And I tried to get it in the NHS, but they said, um, at the time when I was trying to get it, they said, you can't get it because you're not diabetic. <laughs> and they said, away and get diabetic and come back and you can have it. And I just said, it didn't make any sense to me. So if I go away and put on extra weight, I can get it. And they said, uh, and, and it just, it wasn't, it's not, you know, people don't have any sympathy for fat people. That's the problem. Yeah. So when I luckily found people that do, and that do understand that obesity can be a symptom of um, manic depressive or um, severe anxiety. And when depression and anxiety meet, you're, you're fucked, you know, it's, yeah. it's brutal, absolutely brutal. You don't know whether you're coming or going. And if you don't smoke, you don't drink. You don't smoke, you, you don't drink. You so I mean, kind of suppose my addictions were transferred onto food. So it just yeah. became, I would shake and start crying and the only thing to stop it would be to eat food, Yeah. you know? So I didn't just go and get the operation. I had a year of therapy first. So that I was, by the time I got this operation, I was eating the way I am now, before it, and just trying to keep the heat. Oh. So it's the best thing you've done? Aye. Health-wise, totally. anyway. Oh, God, aye. So you must have a lot of, uh, you must be looking forward to the next year. Have you got any exciting projects you'd like to punt? I don't know. Um, I, well, oh, actually, I, well, what am I doing? <sighs> I'm, I'm working on Still Game live at the Hydro just now. Good. I'm writing music for them. Congrats, you did that Thanks last so time. I did that last time, I so yes. I'm back working with the boys. Um, I can't tell you anything about the show because it's been sworn to secrecy. No worries. You can um, tell us when it's I'll tell you when it's stop recording. I've got a wee part in a film that's coming out. That Let me guess. Can I guess? I don't think I'm meant to tell you. Right, yes, okay, no, no, okay, guess. Am I allowed to say it? I don't know. Train spawn? I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Right. Okay. Maybe, yeah. 
Maybe, maybe Zai, maybe no. I had a, an audition for that. Did you? Uh, what were you auditioning for? Security guard number four. <laughs> <laughs> and did you not get it? No. <laughs> I was auditioning with See the Bookie for Still Game. St- uh, Stevie the Bookie? Stevie the Bookie. Um, Matt Costello? Yep. All right. So I walked in and I was like, ah, Stevie! I was like, that's the first time I've ever met him. I was no, like, ah, no. Stevie the Bookie. You get say, I must get that all the time. Uh, Danny Boyle, no, that was there. And I was like, oh, Stevie the Bookie. And I was like, I've just made myself look like a dickhead. <laughs> that's probably why I've no go to it. But he, know that I'm slagging that guy. He's a lovely uh, He's a great guy. Lovely guy. Good guy. He was a good guy. I bet that'll be good. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Aye, well, maybe if I'm in it. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not. Aye, who knows? Oh. <laughs> that's not even coffee, mate. That's just what is it? a puddle. A puddle? That's it. This is not even recording. Right, aye. This is just part of yours. Aye. Right, okay. It's your holodeck. Aye. Right, okay. The doors are locked to the outside. <laughs> so, uh, so you've not had a drink in 15 years? No. Um, are you going to join a gym or anything like that? Uh, I've got a trainer who's pestering me at the moment to go back to the gym, but I, at the moment I'm just... There's too much to deal with at the moment, you know, yeah. with the losing weight and everything. So it's something that I will do. But the gym, the gym's got the this association with me of just being somewhere where I fail, Aye. you know. And some and this the, the trainer guy I've got is brilliant. It's called Chris, and and he doesn't uh, ever make me feel a failure, even when I'm, I'm, you know, I've not been for months, and I mean, he's always nice. But I just kind of associate it with these. Uh, come on, Lord ass, you know, these PE teacher <laughs> types, you know, you're just like, fuck off, mate. I just, so the gym always gives me the fear. Um, but it is something that I'll I'll probably start doing this year at some point. Good. But nah, man, you know. Do you ever get anybody trying to latch on to you because you've done well now? And it's like, oh, come to the gym and we'll give you a free month if you hold a, oh, aye, hold aye. a carrot up. Aye, 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 all that. Aye. Um, and no, yeah. you know, fair enough, but no. I had um, a woman ask me to go to her house. She was like, can you come to my house dressed up as Bobby <laughs> uh, for my daughter and sign a book? And I was like, <laughs> no. going to pay you? No, just turn up at her house and chat the door and sign the book. Have you ever had anything like that? Oh, there's, there's, well, there's people that think that River City's real. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely, I, I never, I never believed that was a thing. But genuinely, a lot of people do. A woman came up to me in George Square and slapped me in the face. Wow! Out of nowhere, and I was, like, what, 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 what? Are you okay? What, what, what is it? And she went, "That's for marrying Tatiana, and no Iona." And I, was like, <laughs> and I was trying to remember who who that was and what the storyline was, and I don't know what you're talking about. And then I was in the, I was in a ferry to Arran with my pals. Um, we go to Arran every year. And uh, this wee old woman came up to me and went, excuse me, son, can I have a wee word with you? And I went, aye, what's up? And she went, it's no your wane. For God's sake. <laughs> and I went, what? And she went, it's no your wane. And I went, what's no my wane? J- j- the Tatiana's wane's no yours. She went back to that pole and, and shagged her ex. And, went, <laughs> and I just went, oh, well, thanks for telling me. Oh, I'm better to know. I'm better to know than, than, oh. than to, you know, I'll be having a word with her, you know. Than, right, son, I just I don't want to ruin your, your wee trip. But like that's she's it. helped you? Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, dear God, what a shame she really thinks it's true. And then, I mean, there was there was people a couple of weeks ago at a gig going, my wife says you're Big Bob at the River City, but I said, no, you're no, you're an actor called Tom. And I went, well... I am an actor called Tom, but I played Big Bob in River City. <laughs> no, no, Big Bob's a different guy. Big Bob lives in Shield Inch. And I'm like, oh, mate, you think he's got away from her? I know, and I'm th- but she was, well, she was mental right. too. But I, I was like thinking, they they think it's Towie. They think it's a reality thing. So in that case, Lenny Murdoch has murdered fourteen people. <laughs> <laughs> you could go and celebrate Big Brother next. No, I couldn't. I didn't you know you I looked was. like you were going to punch me there when I said that. No, I'm too mental, darling. Honestly, I'd last about three hours in there and then I'd want out. Oh, fair enough. I couldn't sit. I couldn't sit there and listen to that. The big man is on it. Um, the Scottish guy, for James Cosmo. Ah, yeah, he's good. I, I know, but I, do you know I can't watch it this year because I I can't stick Colin Nolan. 
Ah, she's a pain in the ass. So I just, I, for somebody on it that I'm not that keen on, I just won't watch it. I hope James wins it though. I don't watch it. I mean, but I've I not just, seen it. And uh, I normally watch Big Brother, but this year I just was like, oh, I don't. Nobody is. Nobody's in it that's holding my interest. Do you know? They should have put Katie Hopkins and Jenny Godley in together. That would have been good. That would have been amazing. I think that Jenny would have shanked her. Jenny, she totally would. <laughs> <laughs> One person that would sort out Katie Hopkins would be Jenny. Ah, uh, she's an idiot though, isn't she? Katie, Katie Hopkins. Aye, Aye. Oh, she's hellish. Um, but, but most of it's for. I think she's got writers. Honestly, uh, I think she's got writers. Have you seen that photo of her getting shagged in the field? Aye. Is that not just like comically? It's amazing. It's like perfect. It's almost she's as if she's looking, it's almost as if she's looking over her shoulder to check the <laughs> check the paparazzi's there first. Aye. Isn't it? It's not even like they've went to hide. Like you want to shag us in my farm? We'll hide mm-hmm. behind a bush. They're Aye. In the fucking walkway of the farm. Aye. Like you could be walking your dog and you're like, oh, there's Katie Hopps, Hopkins getting pumped. <laughs> So uh, I remember, are you still into ghosts? And Aye, still into the ghosts. Dad. I'm going. Do you know what? Uh, I keep getting in, I keep getting asked to go in these um, ghost watch things at night. Yeah, there's a lot of paranormal societies now round yeah. about, especially in Scotland. For I don't know why. And sometimes I'm like that. I was meant to be going to one at the secret bunker up at Crail. I was and I thought that's going to be really spooky up there. But the last one I was asked to go to is in, it's going to be in April and it's the Pierce Institute in Govan. I don't know if you've ever been in there, but it is yeah. one of this, even during the day, it is a scary place. Institute, is it a, an old hospital? I don't know what it was originally. It's now just a kind of community halls, community centre, but um, they're having an all-night, like starting at midnight and they've got all the gear, they've got all the the special cameras and all the EVP stuff, all the recorders to see if you can hear the ghosts and to see if you're looking for a pal, I'll go with you. Do you want to come? I, I, Tom, I would I'll say it to them. I'd love that. Right, Dan, totally. But obviously, don't. if it's too much hassle, it's all right. It's not any hassle, I'll say it to them. I'd love to do that, mate. Right, OK. Because, um, I mean, I love like ghosts, UFOs, all that kind of stuff. Aye. I've got anybody to talk to you about it, but they all think you're mental. Oh, um, you're right, fair enough. Well, see, I think it's mental to not think that there's UFOs. Yeah. Because how can it possibly just be us? Well, that's true. How can it possibly just be us? Maybe they're not... Well, see, I think they are here, right? But maybe they're not actually here. Yeah. But you can't have a universe that's infinite and no have other folk. That's scary to think that there would be nobody apart from us. That That's worse to me, to think that we it's just us. I know what you mean, but I'm going to be awake all night if we think like that. I know. You know. Have you seen that video that went viral on Twitter? What was that? And it was showing you... Basically, it was showing you the earth... And it was expanding out, and it was just showing you were within like thousands and thousands of like galaxies. And oh, I have seen that. Yeah, like, it made me feel sick. I it made me feel sick as it well. It made my balls go back up inside aye. my body. Aye. Like we're a grain of sand. Aye. Uh huh. No, no, no. I get. I start getting f- funny when that happens. I start. F- and I. I know that's too scary. Aye. But see if honestly, I've. Over the past couple of years, especially with the world being so mental and, and coinciding with me not being that mentally well, a couple of years ago I was going to see if I saw a UFO and it landed and the door opened, I'd fucking go straight in it. <laughs> like, Don't care where it's going, I'm going to see just what it is. Like going to do it. Kevin I'd still Spacey probably would. in K Packs, eating I've the banana with the skin still on it. Have no, you seen that? that? No. Oh man, it's fucking amazing, right? I don't think it's supposed to be funny, but. Right. There's this thing called K-Pax. Kevin Spacey is like an alien for the future, and they send them back. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he's acting like an alien and all that. And he's like, he's sitting in a group meeting, and he, the cunt eats a banana, right? A full <laughs> banana with the skin still on it, uh-huh. like no bother. Uh-huh. And everybody's just like, but he was an alien. That's how they eat bananas. Is there, is there anything wrong with eating a banana skin? No, an unpeeled banana. I know, but is there anything wrong with eating the skin? Would it kill you? You're one of them. Uh, an alien. I think it would kill you. I might no, be it wouldn't kill Sometimes you. I've thought I might be an alien. Really? You ever thought you might be an alien and you don't realise? Uh, aye. All the time. You, you can get, st- I've heard you can get stoned off of smoking banana skins. <laughs> aye, if you toast them under the grill. <laughs> Have you heard that? No, I've heard that as well. Aye, I've heard that. I don't yeah. think it's true. You've never tried it? No. No, 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 no. I've never tried that. Get the bananas, is it? 
Well, we're tired. Roll up. <laughs> How would you get the munchies, but? Eh? Nothing. Right. I'm just talking shit. Right, aye. Right, so, you know what else I was thinking? I mean, because I'm, I'm totally open about this podcast. I'm not up for getting anybody on. Mm-hmm. And when we were talking about ghosts and all that the mm-hmm. first time, I wanted to kind of get paranormal people on. But I don't know if this would be a bad idea. What? Have you seen uh, the Enfield haunting? Yeah. Have you seen the film that they made? I think it's called... The uh, I saw the TV adaption they did, and then I saw The Conjuring 2, which Conjuring. is based on it, but I had to kind of put it off. Aye. Because I'd seen the Enfield haunting, and they had Hollywooded it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, why have you Hollywooded it? But that kind of made me think... It actually started to see Paddy Considine. Who's that? Or the actor that was in Dead Man's Shoes. Considine, is it? No, I don't know. He's a really good actor anyway, but he's a bit mental as well. And he right. tweeted, has anybody ever played a Ouija board before? Mm-hmm. And I have played a Ouija board. Right. But then it made me think, imagine if I'd done a Ouija what board happened? here. What happened when you did it? Oh, it was terrifying, mate. What like, happened? Right, I was about, uh, say I was about 18. Right. And we were in my friend's house. Mm-hmm. I might have been younger, actually, 17. Right. And she had an empty... That's what everybody calls it. Right. So there's like 47 people in this wee house. Uh-huh. And <laughs> one of my pals that went to school, Sarah, her name is, she was always into all that weird kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And everybody was drunk and we were like, let's do a Ouija board. But we never had a Ouija board. She had a glass chess board. Mm-hmm. So she set this glass chess board up, put all the letters on it, mm-hmm. and we did it. And now... I've always been open. That's shaking when you're talking about Ouija boards. Did you see it? That's shaking, I know. Hey, carry on. Uh, so that's freaked me out there, by the way. Okay. Um, so we're all sitting there, and because I was drunk, I was like, hey, fuck it, I'm not scared, I'll do it. Yeah. And I swear to God, Tom, like we were sitting there where the glass was like upside down and we've all got our fingers in the glass. Mm-hmm. And she's like asking it, asking the board questions. And the glass starts to move, and I'm thinking, I'm barely touching that glass, because I don't want to touch it, I want to catch them out here, I want mm-hmm. to catch them talking shy. And I wasn't touching the glass, and the, it was like rooted to the, to the board, and it was dragging along the board to the letters. No, it was spelling out stuff, but it was like, oh, gibberish, it wasn't making any sense. But then the glass, like, went like, like that, when we all had our hands on it, and I was like, I can't even push that down. I was trying to push it down flat, and the the chessboard shattered, and I've never sobered up, I sobered up, like, so quick in my life, and I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here. And, uh, like, I don't know if my pal's talking shit, but my pal, she's had, like, a priest up to her house a few times to, like, bless her house and stuff, because, uh, like weird things was happening and all that kind of shit but that properly freaked me out but it makes me kind of want to go back and play it again well see I I don't know I, what I could do I mean I know a guy that's great for he's, he's a great psychic and he's a great medium and everything and, and you can maybe get uh, him on to, to talk about it um, a guy called Craig Lecky and, and his partner Amira they're both psychic investigators um, and I don't know if they know anything about the Ouija boards. Most people, especially if you're talking to a medium, most people will warn you off a Ouija board. Aye. Nobody's got a good thing to say about a Ouija board, you know? Uh-huh. So, it was scary, by the way. It, was it scary. sounds scary. I mean, I get scared when even when you were talking about it. I was getting a bit kind of, oh, my God. Yeah. Um, but, well, no, you'd be a braver man than me if you do that in your podcast. Aye. I was like, but you, yeah, I tell you what, you would, get, you would get a lot of viewers if you were doing a live Ouija board oh, I'd try it would you do it with me no 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 too if, fair if you get the mediums on you can come on though aye I'll come on with them aye but I don't think they would be into doing a Ouija board but they would do you a reading you know the, guys, fair, the guy did a reading for me and it was like my mum and dad were on the phone aye seriously he was brilliant aye wow man I know and there's a lot of folk make it up aye but these guys were good I used to work with See Jehovah's Witnesses, mm-hmm. they're like proper scared of 
see mediums and all that kind of stuff. They, they're scared of them. Scared of them? Yep. They, How? they, uh, I wish I was educated enough to put it into a <laughs> sentence. It's like, they, they look at mediums like they're, like demons and all Aye. that kind of stuff. Well, a lot of religions do. Yeah. A lot of, um, a lot, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible about, you know, uh, fortune tellers and stuff but I don't buy any of that I think it's all just I, I mean I'm not a religious guy uh, so I think a lot of that's man made a lot of that's just invented by people to you know because a lot of the old Wiccan stuff and a lot of the old uh, earth spirit nature spirit I just saw something go by the screen there behind us did you see that? a ghost? I don't know it was just like a wee thing an orb? aye that's freaky. Oh no, it was the mouse. You're moving the mouse thing about. One of the guys is moving the mouse about and the What's pointer the went across. I. Fuck's sake, tall man. My ass collapsed there. <laughs> I'm like, get the Ouija board out. I want to talk to my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> is that you? So, Scott Squad on tonight? Scott Squad's not on tonight. It's on Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Yeah, uh, they've moved it to Wednesday. All right. I actually thought it was tonight as well. Right. I never saw it last week. I only watched it in the catch up. You getting bobbied all the time? Aye. That's why I've got contacts in, because yeah. I just. So does everybody call you Bobby? Aye. So I get called Bob and it's not my name, you get called Bobby and it's not your name. But right, everybody in the world. Aye. Aye. Like I answer to it now. So they are. Like, out in the street, people so they say are. Bobby. And the, I'm guy, like... the guy in my corner, in the corner shop, I've known for nearly 20 years, <laughs> thinks I'm called Bob. <laughs> It's nice though, isn't it? It's alright, I, I don't mind that. I used to get a bit annoyed. Not, actually, my name's Tom. Uh, but now I'm like, that just makes me sound like a tosser. Tom, I mean, I don't. Aye. No, I'm like, I am Bob, aye, that's fine. Because we Stephen Purdon gets it as well. He never gets called oh, Stephen. I feel sorry for him, man. He must get it tight. Aye, well, I mean, we both of us do, because, I mean, I couldn't have, you know, we're both dead recognisable. I mean, a lot of the... If they wanted to go out somewhere, they'd put on a baseball cap or something and you wouldn't know who they were. But I mean, I'm like that, <laughs> waddling down the street. Little, you could see me coming a mile away. And we, Stephen, as well, you know, he's so recognisable too. I always so. remember a couple of years ago, you told us, like, people always stopped you and gave you cuddles and stuff. Aye. Do you still get that? Aye. 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 We old woman. We old woman. I mean, there was one, I think I probably told you about this. There was one day where, and it wasn't long after my mum died, right? And I was really, I wasn't right, and I was getting really... So, do you know what it is that's flying past on the screen? When somebody clicks like, or when somebody clicks something, a wee thing flies across, and I keep thinking it's a ghost. Anyway, uh, no, there was one day, and it was just that, it wasn't long after my mother died, and I was sitting, and I was just desperate for my ma or a granny, or an auntie, or soup, or, you know, what, just a, a their, their son. And do you know what I did? And this sounds so sad saying it, but... I went to Silverburn and I went and sat on a bench and within 10 minutes there was old grannies up giving me cuddles and saying, well, we love River City and I was sitting just going, because I just needed a cuddle. No, there's nothing wrong with that. I just it? needed a cuddle. And then after that I went back up the road and I was all right. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think I told one of them, I think I said, oh, my, my mum died last month and I just finished it. Oh, son, there, there, there. Your mammy would be that proud. And I'm like, oh. So... Okay, no, it's nice. Everybody, everybody that I, I meet, and you'll get it as well. You know, it's nice. Nobody ever says. Oh, everybody's ever horrible. I really like it because it's like older women, but it's like mums with us wee boys or wee lassies, uh -huh. and I'm just like, God, my stand up to that world. I'm so used to just being a stand up, uh -huh. and then that's totally changed my world. Uh -huh. Like during the day. I mean, I've been stopped in the street and then you get a wee boy giving you a cuddle with his ma mm -hmm. and then I walk into a comedy club and I'm doing, <laughs> doing stand-up to like 90 a stag night and I'm getting uh. pints of piss chucked at his. <laughs> 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 but um, see, that's the thing. I mean, uh, Bobby's such a lovable character and also a cartoon character. So kids will go mad about him, but they yeah. were also loving Big Bob as well because he was sort of a cartoon character too. So we both played Glick at people called Bob. Yeah, you know, and and people warm to that if you're a little bit kind of, you know, Bobby's just everybody knows a Bobby. Aye, you know, everybody knows that guy, and yeah. uh, it's the highlight of the show for me. Oh, it's when Bobby you runs up into Officer Carmen, she's amazing. Oh, thank she's you in, very she, much. but she's incredible as well. Ah, she's she's lovely. Isn't ah, she? she's cracking. I know. That's how uh, without sounding 
like brown nosy, but when you've came to my gigs and like the first time you came to my gig, I was like, ah, no way, man, fucking big bob to you. But do, do you not remember the last gig I came to? At the stand. Uh huh. And who I brought? Uh, yep. I brought the singing kettle. Oh no way. <laughs> Aye. This so, is... Artie and Silla from the singing kettle. <laughs> you, I mean. It, Right, on you go. I don't even know how to start this. It's a real right. story. Well, okay, right. I was going to see Dan's show at the stand and I'd, oh, I'd arranged to meet Officer Carton because yep. I didn't want to go on my own, right? So, And she had a, she was going on her own as well, so I met Carton. We'd never met each other before, but we met outside, went in, had a laugh. And uh, I had posted on Facebook that I was coming and I used to work for the singing kettle many, many years ago when I was first starting out in theatre and stuff. So Scylla uh, texted me, oh, can we come? We love Scott Squad and we love Bobby. Wow. And I went, aye. So they got tickets as well and they came down. And then Perry Costello came down as well, who's a firearms guy for the movies. Aye. He went, oh, I love Bobby. And, and So I ended up with this odd table of me, Officer Carn, the guy that's in charge of all the guns and bombs in Scotland and the singing kettle. <laughs> and you came out and there was the bit, and I was sitting with Artie and Silla, who you used to watch when you were a wee boy, yep. and you did that bit where you get your tits out and you're rubbing them like that, <laughs> and everything, being the mermaid, and I'm like, I'm going to tell him as soon as he comes off stage that he's been rubbing his tits in front of the singing kettle. And then after it, when I was talking to Artie, I was uh-huh. like, my tits still hanging out like that. <laughs> I was like, no, Artie, mate, I'm not talking shit, right, but she was singing kettle, it was my, it was my fucking childhood, mate. I used to go to the singing kettle with the BBs, mate. I was down the front row and I was like, ah. And he was just like, who the fuck is this guy? No, he was lovely, but. No, they wife... love you. They love, they Aye, love they Scots. Lovely. They love Scottish comedy, actually, the pair of them. They're Aye. really big supporters. And they go to a lot of gigs. Ah, good. They, they do. And you were down the, near the front as well. Karen we were was a wee bit right, shocked. Right at the front. Who was shocked? Karen. Because um, I don't think she's ever. She's never seen me do a stand up before. Oh, right. So and she's never she's heard the effing and the jeffing. Taking lines off wheelie bins and stuff. <laughs> I was like within eye contact as I said that. I don't even think she drinks. And I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to her the other night and she's like, oh, I need to go to my bed. It's late. It was like half ten. I was like, fuck's sake. Go to my bed about three in the morning and ah, but you're still done, you're still a wee boy. Ah well, fair enough. See when you get to my I don't know what age Carmen is, but see when you get to my age, half ten is late, you're like, oh half ten now. I think I mean I thought Karen was younger. Uh, but I don't see what age she is in case she's I can't really remember but it's I had an idea I ID her on yeah. the set of Scott Squad I didn't believe her yeah. I think she's nearly 50 no she's no. she's 40s mate late 40s I swear to god I had an idea I didn't believe her that's because she doesn't drink doesn't smoke and she makes her home cooked meals right. and she's no I'm dead inside her. like us <laughs> she's no dead inside like us <laughs> 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 she'll live to she's about 120 probably aye man I know Right, so what were we talking about there before I started? Ghosts and UFOs and stuff. Ghosts, UFOs, is anybody asking any questions? I've not got my glasses on. No, I've got not got any other questions. How did we meet? How did we meet? How did we meet? I think it was through Susie. It was Susie McCabe. You'd done that that course with Susie McCabe, hadn't you? No, she did Viv G's, I did Charlie Ross's. Oh, Charlie Ross, there we are, Charlie, there we are. Um, (laughs) No, what was it? Uh, Aye. That's a good impression. Charlie Ross. Um, Charlie's an old pal of mine. Uh, I know that's, I think Susie t- t- took me to see you doing comedy. Aye. I think that was, I think I saw you at the stand. Aye, aye. I think it was, it was actually, it was um, Red Raw. Red Raw. It was Red Raw and it was the, my first time at Red Raw and I, and I wasn't big into going to comedy because I always, my, my ass starts going like a rabbit's nose if I'm cringing, you know, with, with folk. If somebody's dying, I can't watch something like that. Aye. Oh my god, oh god, oh no. And that night you were on there with a few stoters, you know, there was like the girl with the, you know, with the hair that goes, um, you know, um, you know, when you're on the dance floor and you like, <laughs> you're dancing around your handbag, you know, and what is that? <laughs> Decided. Not laughing, no, not laughing, fine. And you know, that, you know what we might be laughing at? There was kind of about three or four of them in a row, and I was sitting going, oh, fucking, how do I get out of here? And then you came on, and it was just like, oh, God, it's a real person, because you come across as a real person, oh, you know, rather than somebody that, see, I'm never fond of a stand up that comes on with props, yeah, or a bag, or a costume. Or uh, I'm just always a bit kind of. I just use my tits as props. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This one, no, that's I. That's uh, oh, that's her. I, I, I threw Susie McCabe. 
Then I think a Who week you, later, you need to get Susie on your podcast. Aye, I'll get Susie on, aye. Aye. And then a week later, I think you asked, is it for a curry member? No, that's because, no, me and you and Leah, pal of mine, Leah, but we, we'd all been at, um, was it not Mazzy's gig? The gig in memory of Maz at the stand in January for Maggie's cancer care. Oh, aye. Or, no, it wasn't. It was Susie McCabe's Glasgow Comedy Festival night. Aye. And me and you and Leah all went to the Spice Garden. Oh, God rest his soul. But all free in the morning. It's not even dead. It's <laughs> dead to me because I can't eat Indian food anymore. That's the one thing, Dan. Uh, is there certain foods that you just can't eat? Aye. Well, see, right. Okay. I can't eat carbohydrates. Right. Oh, mate. And I can't eat sugar. So if I eat sugar, it causes a, a thing called dumping syndrome, which floods my body with insulin, and it's like a hypo. Yeah. Carbohydrates are just a terrible idea. And Indian food is just... Well, the, food, the Indian food I liked was all butter and cream and spices and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. There are recipes for stuff, but it's not... I mean, I like the South Indian garlic chilli chicken oh, with amazing. the extra chilies and the naan bread and the, the whole bit and the rice. Can't eat rice anymore ever. That's me enough. It's anything that expands would get stuck. So I can't eat bread either because it would get stuck. But uh, that, the Spice Garden was my, that was, you know, it was my mothership. Have you ever had the chili pakora for that? Chili pakora? Chili pakora. I took a, a date there. Yeah. Well, I've seen her for a while. Right. And we get up steaming. I so I'm always steaming. Any story starts with that. And uh, I was like, that. Uh, they're full green chilies, by the way. And I was like, I want chilli pakora, mate. And he's like, no, don't eat that. The, the was it on the menu? On the menu. And he's like, ah, you know what, mate, don't eat that. Well, he, he was he was like Indian. Right. And I was like, ah, how no? And he's like, ah, it's too spicy, mate. You won't handle it. And I was like, ah, mate, get in that kitchen, <laughs> get me chilli pakora. He brought it out, full green chilli pakora, battered in a pakora. <laughs> and I uh, was steaming, took a bite. And I was like, ah, it's not that bad. Took another bite. I swear to God, it was just like that. I just instantly sobered up, sweating coming out my ears. Ouija like, boards, sweat. chili pakora. Oh, here, this was worse than the Ouija board. I was yeah. scared. I was like, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> This was more scary than the Ouija board. This other Indian guy just appeared through the kitchen with a big jug of yogurt and he's like, ah, drink! Do they have it on standby? Aye, ah, he's like, ah, drink this. I never, you know how bad it was? It was so bad I couldn't even eat my dinner. Like, that's how spicy it was. Uh, oh, aye, man. So you can't eat that? <laughs> were you eating it? No, I can't eat that. Were you trying to eat it to impress the girl you were with? Well, they were both, aye. Right. See when somebody says, oh, you can't do that? And I was like, aye, is that right? Right. I'm not going to do that. Right, I see. I, I'm kind of like that as well. Plus, I like a spicy food as well. But Aye. I thought my hair was falling out my head. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else asking any other questions? Peter Knox, is the new Ghostbusters film better than the originals? Uh, I've only seen half of it. I put it off. Um, and I didn't put it off because I wasn't enjoying it. I put it off because I was watching it with my nephews and they wouldn't shut the fuck up. Who's that? Where's she going? What's they doing? You know, and I can't, I can't cope with that. So I think it's different. I, I like, um, I like Kristen Wig and, and is that her name? The bridesmaids people. Uh, they're, they're really funny, and yeah. it was a funny script. But I've not watched it all yet, and I was never mad about the original Ghostbusters anyway. Really? No, not really. I was a bit old. I was at the pub by then. Oh, man, See, I you were the right age, maybe. I used to jump about dressed up as Egon. Like I used to wear a Ghostbusters suit all the time. <laughs> Like when I was a wee guy, right <laughs> up until I was ten or something, uh -huh. I used to just store a boot with a wee back, like the the backpacking, uh -huh. and I had NHS specs anyway, so they were really? massive, <laughs> and I used to just dress up like that. Ah, but you were the right age. I was, I think, I was about fifteen or sixteen when Ghostbusters came out, and I think I was at the pub by then. Oh man, it was all right. The remake, I mean, it was good. It was good, but it wasn't as as good. But uh, Bridesmaids is amazing. Have you seen ah, I love that? Bridesmaids. Aye, yeah. That's amazing. I love to see them in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> when he's in Helen, I know the owner. <laughs> Aye, that's probably one of my favourite. Uh -huh. You start, you're into old films as well, aren't you? Aye. Aye. I'm into old films. I like old daft musicals and stuff. Yeah. What Aye. like? 
well, The Sound of Music is my favourite all-time movie, and yeah. uh, it took me a long time to actually be able to tell folk that. But no, I like old like James Stewart films and stuff like that. But uh, just trashy stuff from the seventies, like Jaws two. Yeah. And nobody ever likes Jaws two. They always laugh at you for saying Jaws two, but I like it because more folk get eaten. Yeah. And the sharks there from the start. Whereas in Jaws one, you're an hour into it and you've not seen uh, a shark yet. He's back. Uh -huh. He's angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jaws 2 you're like, oh, and it's a big gang of teenagers out in boats and you know they're all going to get eaten Aye. so it's like, there you are, what, what's to complain about do you know what I watched the other night and it was a total guilty pleasure mm -hmm. uh, see the first Rambo aye. I was like, first blood. this is brilliant I said aye that's right, it was one of the first when videos first came out and video shops were first, that was the, the big film when aye. you went and rented a video for the video shop what? Honestly, it wasn't called Rambo, it was just called First Blood. What was it? Aye, because they never called it Rambo 1 until Rambo came out, which was the second one, and then it all got weird, and there was Rambo 3, and it was, what are you talking about? Because there wasn't a Rambo 1. Aye. Is the, is the second one, no, like, as stupid, isn't it? It's like Rambo First Blood 2. <laughs> the first one was called First Blood, right. and the guy was called Rambo, right? The second one was called Rambo First Blood 2, right? <sighs> and then they brought out Rambo 3, and everybody just was like... Yeah. God help you if you were obsessive compulsive about stuff. Yeah. But I think they've went back and changed it to Rambo 1, Rambo 2, Rambo 3 now. Aye, they should. It was good. It's like Final Destination. You had Final Destination, Final Destination 2, Final Destination 3, Final Destination 4, The Final Destination, <laughs> and then Final <laughs> Destination 5. What? That's good though. Uh, uh, that's good. Uh, you just know you're going to see people getting killed in a funny way. Yeah. That's why I like Rambo, he's like, I think he was in the woods and he's like, Oh dude, that's your world. <laughs> in here, it's mine. I, d I don't want any trouble. Have you seen Deliverance? Yeah. Aye. Right. That's pretty grim. Have you seen, God, we were, we were all over at Aaron that time when the wee woman was in the boat and we're just taking over a stack of horror movies because we were staying okay. in this cottage in the top of a hill and it looked like the Evil Dead cottage. Oh, really? And I had been online and seen that they did that. They got a DVD player in a, in a movie. And we took over loads of horror movies and we, we ended up watching four wrong turn movies in the one <sighs> night. Oh my God. And it was it was hysterical and petrifying at the same time. Hi. <laughs> and there was one bit where there was a, there was a window behind the telly and uh, <laughs> it was pitched black here. It was pitch dark. We were up this hill. There was barely any electricity. And it was pitch dark and I... And I sneaked out while everybody was watching the film and I took my iPad out and I went round and I got a picture of Michael Jackson on the iPad. <laughs> I don't know why I picked Michael Jackson. And the window was right behind the telly and I just held it up to the window, Michael Jackson looking in the window and everybody went, Aah! It was brown. That's the wrong turns, like the, is it like the goblin guys? It's the cannibals. Aye. It's the cannibals in the hills in America. Yeah. So it's the, they've got a wrecking, car wrecking yard and they eat everybody that breaks down, they keep their cars. You ever seen a horror film called Basket Case? No. Oh, Tom, mate, honestly watch it. What happens? I don't even know. Hey, don't like tell me, I'll just go home and watch it. Is it scary or is it stupid? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's stupid. It's about a guy that's got a twin, but his twin's like a deformed freak, and he keeps him in a basket, an actual picnic basket, okay. and he walks about New York with this big, massive picnic basket, and he opens it up, and this, it's clearly like a hand puppet, it's so low budget. Is this a film, or did you just dream it? I am like, I'm inside it, and I'm playing the Ouija board, and then, <laughs> no, it's good, it's like one of those cult kind of classics. Uh -huh. But I don't do it justice, mate. It's funny. I'll watch it when I get in then. Basket yeah. case. Basket case. And Is that's it on the, the same Netflix? again. There's like 25 of them or something. I'll find it. Don't worry. He grows up and gets a job. Basket that. case 25. Aye. Right. <laughs> it's like the death wish. The death wish is good. Aye. Any, any more nails? God, I look, I look really handsome there. Let's see. Oh, God. What Can is you your wee, what is the wee yellow circle thing? What is that? Your logo? It looks a bit Illuminati, Darren. It is. Is it? Yep. Triangle with a circle in it. I think the Illuminati. Yeah, there we are. Oh, it's your head? In a triangle? It's a wee bit uh, slow as well. Aye, there's a delay. 15 seconds away. Aye. Like myself. Aye, right. because look. Ah, there we are. Uh, 
Uh, what questions are they? Can you see that? I can't see it. Can you read? That's me just thanking that when I in there for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Nice hair, Dan. Thanks, Michelle. Right. Let me see. Is that a skin fade? Yeah. Oh, I've got a skin fade. That's looking trendy, I mate. I know. Well, see, the thing is, uh, I've forgotten that I'm 47. So I'm now going and getting, because I've lost weight, I feel like a teenager again. So I'm going and getting all the, you know, all the gear. You should when, be. When though. I turned 40, I panicked and ran out and got a tattoo. On my Have you got a tattoo? Month, I've got a stupid tattoo. <laughs> Where? Just to, right, I'll show you. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad, but it was all the rage about seven or eight years ago. Everybody had it. That's quite oh. Illuminati. You've got to you see it. What? No, this isn't the Illuminati. It's Paolo and Tini. Oh, is it? Aye. I think and he's got... And you go to eight years ago? What was he fucking eight about years seven, ago? About four? About seven years ago. About seven years ago. No, I'm sure they played... Did they not play a song, one of his songs at Jade Goodney's funeral? I think he was still in nappies eight years ago. Mate. No, he wasn't. They played, they played that Paolo song at Jade Goodney's funeral. When did she die? She died a while ago, didn't she? Aye. Ten years ago, maybe. When did Jade Goodney die? Ten. No. No, but Paul, no, Paul Lentini's been about for about 10 years, has he not? You ever met him? Aye. Is he a good, good boy? Well, I'll tell you what happened. I was playing a gig in the Corinthian, in the, in the, at the piano, and somebody had asked for a Paul Lentini song, so I started singing that one. And me a model pupil and let me I'm gonna get to... But I started it too high. That's the key had started it too high, so I was going... No, this is a nightmare, I can't stop. And I got to the end of the song and I looked up and he was standing at the end of the fucking piano. Paolo Rettini, just looking like that. Disappointed? No, just laughing at me because obviously I was having a nightmare and I looked up and he was standing there. <laughs> but he's, he's for Paisley, he knows my nephew and stuff. My nephew knows him. Is his master on a chippy? Aye, Castle of Aye. I've, I've never had any new to it. No? No. Well... You won't that be particular there, avenue of pleasure. I could have a single fish. Single fish? I could have a single fish. What about pickles in that? Well, I think I could probably have a pickle. I know you like a pickle. Oh, aye. Um, but I don't think it would be very good for my stomach, because... Uh, no, no. No. And if I just stop eating them and they fuck your stomach up. I mean, I was eating full jars. Would you pickle Aye. Honestly, I... Uh, that pickle's no launch your career, though. Aye, it did. So stupid, isn't it? I, I even had a joke about pickles and it was like my signature joke and it was a good joke what but did you ever do a joke so long? What was, what was your joke? I don't know if I should say it. It's pure shite. Come on. And plus it's not a stand-up saying. I say, I think I said, God, I've not done it in so long. Uh, does anyone like chippy pickles? And normally everybody shouts, yay! I'm like, see, when I was younger, I used to eat chippy pickles so much that my grand told me if I kept eating them, I would turn into one. Uh -huh. So I don't eat them anymore because I don't want to be a chippy pickle. <laughs> even though she's a vegetable. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's it. Shit, it? No, it's, it's great. I think great. that's how it went. I've not seen it in about five years. Do you think you could get chippy, chippy pickle pecora? Try saying that. Chippy pickle pecora. Oh man. Ch I think you can get pickle. anything in pecora, mate. It's can fucking you? Scotland. They, they fry Mars bars. I think if you went in with a slipper, they would deep fry it. Slipper pecora. Like there's a chippy in the tune that you can take in anything you want and they'll deep fry it. Where? I can't remember what it's called, but my mate says he took in uh, a double decker and he, they deep fried it. <laughs> and they fucking charged him £2. He took the double decker in and they fried it. How the fuck did they charge? It's his double decker. Is it like a corkage thing? It's like a, a, if you take your own bottle, they charge you two quid corkage. Oh, right, fair enough. So it's like a double decker corkage. Have you ever ate a fried Mars bar? No. Never? No. All right, okay. Have you? Aye. What are they like? Don't do it. Well, I couldn't know. I'd probably keel over if I did now. But uh, it's what? Talk me through it. Does it is it all melted inside? Uh, it's just like I mean, it is what it is. They deep fry a Mars bar. It's like battered, a battered Mars bar, and surprisingly, it's like ta it's kind of tasteless, but it's just really it's like put salt and vinegar on it. They can if you ask for it. Mate, they put gravy in it if you ask for gravy. And fucking. But see, the gravy. thing about that is that it's become such an urban myth that every time I go to London, 
and they hear a Scottish accent, they immediately, maybe it's, they're just associating because I'm a big guy, but maybe they immediately go, oh, you all eat Sco- uh, deep fried Mars bars all the time. Uh-huh. And I've never even seen one. And you would think I would have been, you know, I would have known what that was. It just looks like a dug shite. It does Like battered. <laughs> I was like getting in Edinburgh as well. There was a wee chippy van and all the English people were like, oh, can we deep fry Fanta, please? And you're like, it's no funny, mate. <laughs> Shut up. Can we deep fry Fanta? Let's be ironic and deep fry. So that's your first episode? Yeah. Good stuff. Who else are you going to go on? Uh, I'm going to get Grado back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob, Bobby the barman. Gavin? Aye. Brilliant. Because, you know, you're Bob and Bob. I would get everybody that's called Bob and Bobby. Aye. In Scotland. Mark Cox, I mean, I'd like to ask Brilliant. Mark. He's I've got all... a good story on him. Yeah. I've, I mean, I don't really... I've only met him a few times, but mm-hmm. I've chatted to him. He seems like a good egg. He is. I think he would come on. He is, totally. And uh, really, I'm open-minded, if any, but I want to get the paranormal people on. Uh, well, listen, that would be a good episode because they would answer all your questions and... I've met a lot of psychics and mediums and stuff, and, and a lot of them you just are thinking they, they would know that by looking at my Facebook or they would know that by yeah. reading what I'm, my, my body language is or anything like that. But these guys were, they really took my breath away. I'll sort it for you. Aye, I'm not sure. I'm a paranormal special. Ask my granddad if he's ever had a deep fried Mars bar. Aye, you could get a kind of spooky background, a Scooby Doo <laughs> Castle background on. Have you, yeah. have you done many podcasts? Have you been on Janie's? Uh, no, I've not. Janie and Ashley don't have guests in theirs, but I've kind of done bits and bobs for them on it. Yeah. Um, the only podcast I've ever done is yours, I suppose. Mine. Hi. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're the only person that's asked. I'd love to work with you, by the way. I think we would have some laugh. What could we do? I don't know. We could play father and son and something. You could be my big brother. I could be your big brother. How about you're my big brother and we still live with the man of da? <laughs> and I'm 47. <laughs> like, sorry. Have <laughs> totally you seen sorry like with Robbie oh. Corbett? Language, Timothy. Aye. Totally, but totally still fighting like kids. Aye. Like stepbrothers? Aye. But actual brothers? Aye. But they've never left home? No. So there's these two adults, they must be about, maybe in their 70s, and the, their kids just never left home. They just stay there and they still behave like kids. Aye. So we're giving away a plot idea for a really good sitcom live on Facebook instead oh, of coming up with it on our own. I think we could do that, though. I think we should do it. Do you want to write it? Aye. Right, let's do it. Shake on it, then. Everybody's What's it called? that. Uh, I don't know. Step Brails. 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 Bros. Bros. <laughs> <laughs> Right, no, I think that's a good that's idea. That's a good idea. Right. So, is yeah, anybody, well. how long have we been doing this for? Right, we've done this for a bit of an hour and a bit. Right. Is that enough? I'm fine. You kill. Whatever you want. We've right. covered UFOs, ghosts, alcoholism, mm-hmm. deep fried Mars bars, mm-hmm. the Bofi has been dead inside. Uh-huh. That's been pretty good. It is. Has it stopped? I think it's still going. I look really pink, didn't I? We both look really pink. 